Hey guys, Tim and Dave here at the Single Malt Review with another look at a scotch here for mm. you. And there is a new bottler in town. Yes. Another independent bottler. This time it is North Star. Mm. This is the first of theirs I'll have ever tried. And this one is a Speyside Dram from Ochrisk. Yeah, Ochroisk, not mm. one that really sees the light of day too often, and that's probably why they, and consequently I, could afford it. <laughs> um, not the most fashionable of distilleries there. And yeah, this one caught my eye because it's not often you see someone just wading on into the independent bottling mm. game. I would have thought that door had swung closed really long ago, but no, I guess there's still a few casks up for yeah. grabs. And this is, despite the fairly pale colour, a cask strength offering. It is. It is a full 56.3% ABV, which is whopping. This is 14 years old. It is actually one month shy of being 15, based on the distillation and bottling dates. So it's a March 2006 distillation. It yeah, dates back away. And uh, matured in a refill hogshead and finished in Oloroso Sherry. Yeah, the refill hogshead, that's pretty easy to spot. That's a fairly light-bodied whiskey. The um, the sherry finish that must have been either a very short finish or an absolutely very well ragged Oloroso cask because absolutely scant cask. That on is that one. very pale for a fourteen year old whiskey, especially at this strength. So yeah, interesting, interesting oh, treatment on wow. that one. Sorry, I got a whiff of it then, and man, that's a unique nose already. Yeah. It's um, it is not lacking in oh. intriguing flavors. Mm. This is a bit of a weird one. I wasn't quite sure what to expect with this, because who knows, who, who really can say, oh yeah, I know exactly what Ock Royst tastes like. <laughs> yeah, Ock Royst and Chineak. Write down those tasting notes right off the dome, but no. So, um, mm. big aromas of butterscotch caramel confectionery. Yeah, it's very spirit driven, mm. but what vanilla oak notes there are, are really sort of, maybe it's because they're standing so sort of starkly exposed mm. amongst all that spirit character, but they seem they seem real strong. There's a, um, like a vanilla, French vanilla ice cream thing mm. going on. Especially at full strength, I found, that's very, very stark. Very, very, oh, really Maybe obvious. Classic uh, milk bottle sweets. The yeah, um, candy, yeah. which looks, it's a soft, chewable candy, looks shaped like a milk bottle, flavoured with milk, I think. Lactose mm. is, a, is a big thing going on there. Yes. And yeah, I see exactly what you mean. I wonder how much of a New Zealandism those milk bottles hmm. sweets are. I mean, the other people who let us know, I'm sure. They're sort <laughs> yeah. of a, a chewy, opaque thing, and they do have quite a unique flavour. Milky flavour, mm. funnily enough. So at full strength, and this is going to be kind of a fireball here. Ooh. An approachable Ooh, fireball. Spicy. Mm, that is extremely lemony and limey too. That is, oh, lots of zest, lots of citrus juice. Mm. Yeah, That's it a is a real um, contrast to the aroma. It is, it is Speyside as mm. heck, which checks out because Ockroyce is In fact, that's reminded me a little of, I do unashamedly enjoy the odd sour beer, and this is reminding me of a uh, fruity lactose sour beer. It is a slightly milky edge from the lactose, but a big a fruity zesty sharpness of the... Um, uh, the sour ferment yeah. and, and the fruitiness. Definitely fruit. I get quite a lot of licorice and aniseed. There's a bit of a licorice all sorty thing, mm. I find. I see what you mean. Going yeah, on here further towards the back. for me, but it's there. There's a lot of, this is quite a disjointed whiskey. It's got mm. a lot of different flavours, but they're all kind of white. One's over here, one's over here. They don't, it doesn't quite, they don't sink up perfectly. Yeah, it makes me wonder what this was like before it had that finish. Maybe it was lacking something and the finish was added to just to I'm not get sure some what. special twist. I think twist, going by the colour, the, um, the refill hoggy that they aged it in was probably maybe just just a bit too knackered mm -hmm. and so they checked on on this 14 years on was like oh this isn't this is moving slow mm -hmm. um so they gave it a bit of a zhuzh with that finish mm -hmm. is my would have been my my reasoning there but um along the way it's picked up some just some weirdo flavors oh and adding the water has brought out lots of fruit on the nose yeah fruit custard mm -hmm. now which is just that happens to yeah. just any space side whiskey that you that you dump water and you're going to get that sort of white fruit custard mm -hmm. Not that it's a bad thing, it's a good thing, but um, it's almost, it's gone a bit arid now on the nose. It's really weird. Mm. It's one of the more tumultuous single cask cask strength whiskies that I think we've seen in a while. It's been a wee while since we've seen a flat out single cask at cask strength, and yeah. I always forget if it's been a bit of an absence, how much those things change, how much they are sort of so many different whiskies in the bottle, depending on how 
much water you put in them. Mm. And this is bringing me right back into it. Because they only got, what, 264 bottles. Mm. So uh, not a, not a that was huge that one. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you that. Yeah. Okay, we're comparing our notes to theirs. Their tasty notes from the nose of loose leaf Darjeeling tea, black treacle. A palate, which is sweet, herbal, and grassy. Real contrast to what we picked up. And a finish which is waxy with oven baked lemons and a touch of aniseed. Yeah, it's a finish. Got citrus yeah, and the aniseed. Finish, yeah. I don't know quite where they're going with the Darjeeling mm. and treacle. The treacle, certainly there's no treacle in this whiskey. That's a madman wrote that down. Darjeeling, uh, maybe, treacle, never. Mm. But adding the water has really brought out lots of um, yeah, perfumey and herbaceous notes on the tongue. So that has, I think, transformed it for the better. Yeah, it's, it, it's, a, it's a weird one. And it's conventional at the same time, mm. just as part of its weirdness. It has a conventional core, and then just has these quite odd notes hanging around the outside. But, yeah, so I think the scores on this, they might vary <laughs> pretty hard, actually, because I, I think this is a... I like this because it's a big, robust cast range mm. of whiskey, and I super like it because it was one of the most affordable... <laughs> you know, this is a 14-year-old whiskey. That's, that's shockingly old mm. these days. And in today's whiskey economy, anything with a 12 or over, that's that's... Bloody old whiskey now, and it certainly did not used to be. Um, and it was stunningly, stunningly affordable. Was, I couldn't believe how cheap this was. I'll bet it won't last because there would be, you know, these would be introductory mm -hmm. prices while it has to make a name for itself. The uh, the North Star people coming coming battling out here to get in front of Signatory and BBR and the 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 whoever. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll bet this is a, a one off bargain for the next, you know, probably a few months while they get established. But yeah, I was stunned by how cheap this was compared to its peers. But scores scores wise, I think. There's a lack of focus here, which is maybe losing it a few points. There's plenty of whiskey in the glass. It's just all over the place in terms of the flavours that are coming out. So it's an 83 from me. Oh, okay. What do you think? I'm going to go a little higher. The sheer novelty of this, the really odd mix of flavours and some particularly odd flavours in their own right, give this one 88. I like the strength, the age, being from a, a distillery you don't always get to showcase so often. It does so many things well. It just it's a, as you say a bit of a jumble, a bit unfocused. Yeah. But it's that chaos includes enough um, well fascination factor for me to push this course back up again. Yeah. No, I think that's that's entirely fair, and that's why I think it's going to hit different people very different sure. ways. So this is a real mileage may vary, but I think we've we've set both ends of the mm. the buffer there. So I think I'm confident confident if you end up with one of the utterly scant number of these bottles, mm -hmm. so I realise the um, chances there are astonishingly low. In fact, far more people will watch this video than will ever conceivably have the chance to purchase mm -hmm. one of these. So I guess um, cheers for that, North Star, but um, I'll bet they'll have some, some other good ones that are not mm -hmm. dissimilar. But then there you go. Um, that is North Star, folks. So track it down. They are of Glasgow, apparently. So them and every other registered company office in... Scotland, but um, if you can if you can find one and recommend another good one, these are kind of on my they're on my hit list while they're still cheap, and there mm. is more than more than one hanging around our market, so I might be able to pounce on them if you've got a few recommendos for me. But at any rate, we'll we'll let you get back to whatever you're doing. This has been Single Mont Review Slanger. We will be right back.